What would you prefer? All a security Canada pension plan. Is that sort of a highest priority for you? Or would you prefer how much money do I need in retirement? In a cloud in the sky, no worry in my mind. Looks like we're in the clear, clear, clear to live in the light. Hello and welcome to today's video. You know, it's going on about three months since I joined Brandon's YouTube channel. And first of all, I'm astounded at how quickly the time has gone by. I'm a little bit surprised at how much I'm enjoying this whole experience. One of the things that I thought I would have done more of by now, videos more geared towards the older demographic, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. When I joined the channel, when Brandon announced I would be coming on board, a, a, a lot of the comments we got were, oh, that's great having a you know an older, more experienced advisor on the channel and with some suggestions. And I wanted to go over a few of those today just to give you a sense of, of what topics I'm still considering adding as we go forward. Melanie said topics that I would like to hear about would be investing as you go into retirement. Scott's critical mass added, I would selfishly like to see the occasional content targeting the 40 or 50 something who plans to retire within the next 10 to 15 years. On another retirement related uh, request, I've been following Brandon for a couple of years, but I'm interested in investing for retirement as a late start with maybe five to 10 years from retirement. These are some examples of some of the requests that I got and clearly there are there is interest in the demographic that is getting closer to retirement or maybe even just in retirement. And I've had lots of questions about how do we manage through that? Let's face it, retirement is one of the most <clears throat> significant and consequential events that a person will go through in their life. And I, I actually think back to my first job and I'm sure many people do as well. And you can think back to how exciting that was. And now all these decades later, there comes a time eventually for most of us where you transition out of that. And I would like to actually consider starting a bit of a mini series, I think I would call it, where I would address certain uh, topics that are specific to, you know, uh, gearing up and getting ready for retirement, transitioning into retirement. And for those of you who are in retirement, living uh, in a retirement, what the differences are in investment portfolios, that type of thing. I have the, uh, I've, I've had the privilege of working with, for example, clients who were in their late twenties when they started with, with me all those years ago, are now in their early fifties and are getting closer to or transitioning into retirement for themselves now. I also have had clients who I started working with when they were in their late 40s who are now in their early 70s and they've gone through the entire transition from almost being sort of at the peak of their earning career, working through till retirement, transitioning in and now uh, many are, are many years into retirement already. Today I want to talk specifically about three things. This is going to be a bit of a shorter video. Three things that I hear all the time and I've had many discussions with my former clients about these, uh, just things to, I hope, put your mind at ease as we move closer and closer to retirement. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is just simply this. You probably won't need as much money to support yourself in retirement as you think. And when you're younger, I know it's a real big scary thing thinking you, you, know, you do all the math and you say, you know, I'm gonna need a million dollars or two million or three million dollars to keep up with my lifestyle. And if you are able and if you're fortunate and disciplined enough to accumulate that wealth, uh, kudos to you and it really does help and it provides you with a lot of sort of downside protection when you do get into those retirement years where you're drawing an income. The reality is though that most people don't accumulate that much money. The vast majority of people retire with much less money than that. It's not uncommon to have a retiree with half a million in retirement or even less than that. And you can live a good, comfortable existence in retirement for many years with that amount. Now, there are some factors that go into that, obviously. The expectations or the assumptions of how much you're going to spend in retirement aren't usually as much as sort of the textbooks would tell us uh, to believe. We kind of use a rule of thumb, you hear this a lot, that you will spend 70% of your current earnings, your current income in retirement. That is definitely a rule of thumb. The major things that I noticed when people transitioned into retirement were, first of all, the first couple of years tend to be a little bit more expensive. And things like, you know, pent up desire to travel, uh, those tend to be more focused early in retirement. A lot of times I saw people say, I'm going to spend money on the house. You know, I've got time now to do some renovations. And so, you know, building a shed in the back or, or finally doing some rentals I've been putting off for a lot of years. Um, 
are some expenses that you're going to incur earlier in retirement. More optional sort of discretionary type things, that is true. However, as we move, you know, sort of settle into retirement and move into the later retirement or mid to later retirement years, the reality is that the vast majority of my clients, even though the vast majority could afford to live a very lavish lifestyle, typically chose not to do that. A couple of reasons I would say. One is you're getting older and you're, I, I think your desires are, you're satisfied with less as you get older. When you're in your 20s and 30s, this is totally justified. And, and I, I felt the same way. You have these wonderful, amazing objectives and desires that you're gonna live this, this great lifestyle. And that means something different to a 25 year old than it does to a 55 year old. Generally, as we age, our expectations become a little bit lower and we're more easily satisfied with what I would call a simpler life. Yes, we need the necessities, but we don't need the Lamborghinis like we think we're gonna want when we're younger. I've worked with so many individuals and so many couples that have gone through this transition. And there's just, I mean, it, it's clear to me that what you're expecting at your younger years that you're going to need in retirement um, are, are is, is probably going to be less. In most cases, that's going to be a benefit and we don't have to be scared, I guess, of going into retirement. The second major point I want to talk about today is the fact that retirement really can be awesome. The vast majority of people who I've who I've worked with through the working years and into their retirement years, it's a really good experience. You know, think of all the hard work that you put in, and and it's you know it's a long time that you're working, and it, it um, for the most part it um, it's a really really nice experience. There are a couple of things I think that really help with that though. Number one is you should start planning. If you're five years away from retirement or 10 years uh, away from retirement, you should start planning now or start, I would say, visualizing what that's going to be like. It isn't you just flick a switch on and off. And that's really, aside from the fact that one day you wake up and you don't go to work, the actual experience is a longer one than that. And uh, I have found that those clients who start actually visualizing and thinking about that ahead of time make the transition much smoother. Even something as simple as, What's my lifestyle going to be like? Uh, I saw a lot of couples, if you're in a relationship where you each had your individual work lives and then you had your home life together. Well, when you, when one or both of you retires, or actually when both of you retire, all of a sudden you're spending a lot more time together. Now that can be magical if you are in fact uh, the type of people who like spending that time together. But I've also seen cases where that causes friction and I think it's really important that you plan, okay, when the day comes where we're not going to work anymore, this is what we do together. You know, partner A, spouse A has one set of activities that they do by themselves. Partner two has the other set of activities and you can kind of mesh that together into a harmonial uh, relationship. Another thing that you really should be doing at this point is starting to imagine doing some rough points at least as to what it's gonna cost in retirement. We don't know that for sure. You won't know till you're in retirement, but you know, looking at expenses that are fixed expenses that won't be going away when you're retired. Other expenses are things that might uh, drop, you know, lunches out, travel, that type of thing. If you have to wear suits for, for work, uh, your clothing budget will typically go down. So have a look and see, uh, or do some contemplation as to what your expenses are gonna be like do you know, rough uh, calculations as to whether your sources of income will be sufficient for that. Sources of income leads me to the third topic, and this is one that you, if you haven't thought about it yet, you will at some point. Old age security, OAS. I'm not gonna get deep into the government benefit packages that we have available to us as Canadians, but one of them, when you turn 65, you'll be eligible for old age security, or OAS as it's, as it's called. Everybody leading up to retirement who doesn't take the time to do their own due diligence will say something like, or you'll certainly hear something like, well, gee, I don't want to have too much money because my OAS is all going to get clawed back. Without getting into the nitty gritty of it, it is a benefit that the government supplements your income if you have income below a certain threshold. And it is a, a, it's a, um, a goal of most retirees to never have a dollar of that OAS clawed back. You want to get the full amount and there is a range of old age security that you're, that you're eligible for. If you are one of the rare people who has all of your old age security clawed back, congratulations. That's actually, in my opinion, that's a good thing. That means you're making roughly $130,000 a year in retirement uh, of net income. So starting at around just under $80,000, the government will start taking a portion of that money back from you. So if you're making $80,000 or less in retirement, you won't 
uh, have any of the OAS clawed back, even though when you hear the retirees talk, you would swear that everybody gets a clawed back. And so if you're starting to formulate your old age security plans or your retirement plans and you're factoring in old age security, um, do your own homework, actually learn about it. Don't just listen to all the gossip out there in the streets. On the table that I'm gonna show you here, it shows that for the 2021 tax year, and if your income is below $79,845, you will get the full eligibility for old age security. And to lose all of it or have all of it clawed back, you will have to be making up to $129,260 of net income for an individual. I've always said to my clients who do have their old age security clawed back, that is a bonus. I mean, if you, clearly, if you can do something legally, uh, if you can do something from a tax perspective that would reduce your net taxable income and, it, and or, uh, allow you to get some more of the old age security, that's that's a bonus. But if you are so, if you have so much retirement income that you can't pull any of those sort of again legal strings, it's a good problem to have compared to much of the universe. For today's video, I just wanted to sort of touch on this topic and introduce it and ask the question uh, and get some feedback from, from you, the viewers. Is this something that you would like to see more of? I'm, I'm going to, uh, as I said, I'm going to sort of consider a mini series. And I know there's lots of questions out there. For this next video, if I do another one, I'd like to know what would you prefer? Would you like to see an in depth video on, I, I would just call it government benefits? So, old age security, Canada pension plan, and the GIS or the guaranteed income supplement for those who would qualify for that. Is that sort of a highest priority for you? Or would you prefer to see a, a video on how much money do I need in retirement? It's an inexact science, but we can go through uh, many of the factors that you would use to calculate you know, how you would judge or how would you make your best guess estimates as to what will affect your circumstances in retirement. One other thing I'd like to mention as well, uh, this is, I guess, a little bit of a favor. If this is something you feel you'd be interested in, I would ask that you share this video with others. I'd like to make sure that I'm reaching and benefiting as many people as possible. If you can share this video with someone who you feel, whether it's a sister, brother, parent, someone who you feel would benefit from this type of information, encourage them to watch at least this little introduction video or some of the other videos on our channel. And if they do subscribe, maybe make a comment as to, to support this type of a thing, that would be really awesome. And uh, you know, for, from your own perspective, if you can you know, give the video a thumbs up, uh, again, if you see a comment, that you like, uh, just like that comment and that'll give me a lot of insight as to whether this is a direction that we want to take and maybe push some of the other projects off to the side. Just a reminder, we do have our Investing Academy. If you're interested in learning more about that project, uh, it'll be in the first link below. I will thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video.